Okay, hey chatters, so I'm going to start doing more workflows. I think uh, prompts are great, but I'm creating all this stuff and I think it would be helpful to learn a little bit more in public. I'm also hoping, you know, people will give me suggestions of how to improve my workflow. So I'm going to walk you through from beginning to end how I've been creating my Miss Nura uh, blog posts. I've been release, releasing these on Mondays like every week for a long time now. I also put them on how to chat with chat GPT so people can listen to them. And the idea behind Miss Nora is just generally like let's learn about AI and different things about AI in an accessible, like more fun, friendly way. So I've been working on this algorithms series recently just to take you through all the major algorithms that, you know, AI uses. So even if you're not, you know, into the math, the math is there hopefully in an accessible way, but it's really more to help conceptually about like, okay, when are these things used and why and what are some of the, the recipes behind the magic? So I use AI a lot in this entire process, obviously, because I'm trying to create as much content as I can, but again, guided by me. So Again, I have this series about algorithms. I've been doing it for a little while now. This week's is going to be linear regression. So I usually start with Claude when I'm writing these types of blogs. It requires a lot less like nifty, cool prompting to get a really good result. And there's kind of a workflow you can follow from beginning to end that I hope is helpful. So as you'll see here, I've done very little actual prompting. I just said I want to write a blog on linear regression algorithms in the following format. This is what I decided that I wanted sort of all of the algorithm ones to follow. Just a quick little intro. What is it? The history of it, how it works. Let's go through the math, advantages, disadvantages, applications in the real world, a TLDR for you people who just want to skip to the most important parts, and then a vocab list. So a quick little thing. So you'll see here, it says, okay, here's an outline. It gives me this outline, you know, which is good enough. It's fine. It gets the idea. And then I want to give it the tone. So, you know, I've written a bunch of these articles already. I've kind of found the tone that I want. And these large language models are great at taking examples of what you want and just, you know, churning that out. So I said, let's start with the intro. We want the entire blog to be a tone similar to the one below. So I just took the intro from like the previous blog that I did just so it gets what I'm looking for. And then we're off to the races. You know, it does the intro. I say great now for the history. And we just go uh, section by section. Now you'll see um, a lot of this is outputting, but then we get to the math. And again, I don't know about you. Most people are not as interested in the math, math but I do want it to be accessible. You know, I, I want you to be able to follow along even again if you can't like remember it or like sit down and do it yourself. Just like thinking through the logic of it is important. So you'll see it went through here, all the math. And I say, take us to the math by using an actual simple fun example. Because this is just, you know, it's a bunch of variables essentially. So it's like I, you lose track. So it comes up with this example of our study to test scores in, in a linear regression model. And it goes through all the math again. And, and again, this is too, this is too much for most people. You look at this and you just you turn off. It's almost like traumatic for most people, I feel like. So I wanted to simplify it even further. It, it cut down the data. So it's just two points. And it does walk through very simply. It's, it's essentially showing like, okay, we predict a certain number will be a certain number. We run that through and we see we're off by a little bit. And so we change that uh, original number and then we get our, our example. But then again, it's doing this thing where it talks about the cost function. It's like, oh, well, we haven't really defined the cost function. So it's like, if I'm not really understanding it, I know no one else is going to understand it. So I say, what does the J stand for? It tells me about the cost function. So then I want to make it like, okay, let's make sure this is super accessible. Again, this makes sense. I can pull this kind of thing and put it somewhere else in the blog. And then I'm just saying, like, let's get simpler and simpler, essentially. Let's walk it through. And then once we get past that, that's usually the hardest part. You go to the advantages. This is not like pretty much all copy-paste. Disadvantages. Um, uh, over here, this is the thing. is like I know what overfitting is, but 
I always want to make sure that I'm I'm using uh, I, I'm explaining the vocabulary in the moment if I can in a specific way. So I just want to make sure we get that definition of overfitting in this context so that we can include that in the blog applications. And then we want the TLDR. It just went way too short with the TLDR. So I was like, okay, a little bit more. So it gives me some more. And now this is the very important thing you want to end on. So there's all these prompts, right? Which are for like, oh, an Instagram post or oh, whatever post. The important thing here, especially with Claude and, and why another reason I love using it for blogs is it just has a really long context window. And so what that means is now I can go through, we've done all this text, essentially. We've written this blog. Now I want to make sure I'm getting all the social media I'm going to need for it. So we go, great, now give me a podcast description, an Instagram caption, a LinkedIn post, and a meta description. The meta description is for um, when we put the blog up later. So you'll see here it comes up with everything for me. So I have it all in place. And again, you want to read these. Um, they're going to be fine. You know, it doesn't have the hashtags. It's fine. You know, you can figure that out later if you want, slash you can ask it to add it. I just don't really care. <laughs> okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is create some sort of image for um, all of this as well. At this point, you've been going along, you know, I, I use Obsidian, which I'll be doing a video on in, in a little bit, but you should be going on with some something open next to you, right? Whatever you take your notes in uh, and be pulling the things you like and then editing sort of along the way. Uh, that way you're, you don't have to like go back all the way through it and do it again. You're just kind of overseeing the flow essentially. So I use Obsidian. You'll see here, I have it all in here. So at this point, I, I want to create an image. Now you can get fancy, right? You can absolutely get fancy with um, all of these prompts for for image generation or whatever. But you know, if you're just doing it for your own thing, uh, and and you're just doing sort of just like a whatever blog, you know, you don't have to overthink it a lot. So all I do, <laughs> and literally, I've come in. Well, I have Professor Synapse enabled, so and I don't even have the text to image one enabled. I just want to see how this worked. Uh, and Dolly 3. And so I just told him I need an image that abstractly represents linear regression in, in a creative way. So he asked me a couple of questions around my preferences. It brings this dude up. He asked me some more. I'm like, okay, I like the falling leaves. It's it's fall now. The leaves are falling. Seems seasonally appropriate. So then this was an interesting thing. I don't know why it did this, but I guess this must be how it's actually sending it out um, to the API. <laughs> but this is what it came up with for its its description, not bad. And it came up with these two images. Now, this is the great thing about Dolly 3 now is I can be conversational about the updates that I want. So I like this kind of idea, but these two didn't hit me, you know, quite right. So I said, let's see four images, lots of leaves falling, trying to find the linear regression line through them. So again, it does this thing and it came up with these two. And you know what? I liked this one. So uh, I'm going to go with this one. So the next thing you want to do is save it. Let's let's download it. And then we're going to go to Canva. So what I do is I just have like a template. So I do my chat with chat GPT covers. And at some point I just made this, you know, like more of a, a video because it just moves ever so slightly. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one. And then I'm going to copy the one below, which which has this symbol on it but you can do whatever you want, whatever templates you have. Copy this up one more. And then we're just gonna put, uh, we're gonna upload our image. So let's go to uploads. Get our image in there while that's downloading. We're gonna change the name. We're gonna call you linear regression. And then we just pull this in. And we pull this in, bada bing, bada boom, and then we're going to download. Don't do all 25 pages. That would be uh, rough. Okay. So let's download this, this guy. I'll give it a second. So while that's going on, uh, I like to add voice to this. Uh, some people just prefer to listen. Uh, and so what I do is I use VoiceMaker. Voicemaker is great because it's cheap, it's good enough, and uh, 
you don't have like a lot of a, a limit. So compare this to Eleven Labs. Obviously, the quality of Eleven Labs is absolutely incredible, but uh, at a cost. You run through your credits very quickly. It can get very expensive. This is five bucks a month, uh, and you have some some things to play with. Uh, anything with like an E here, it usually just means you have some of these voice effects. So for Miss Nora giving giving this character a name, I like to to use, I think her name's like Aria. Yeah, Aria female. And I just bring it to conversational and uh, I changed her, her pitch a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, you see, I make her a little bit uh, deeper voiced. So, but you can play around with some things. Uh, and you got all kinds of options for, you know, the different types of languages or accents. So, you know, I just copy and paste piece by piece in here, usually just around the section headings. And then all you got to do is convert it and you download it. You throw that in a folder. After you've done that, all you got to do is bring up Descript. So I use Descript for uh, all of my sort of editing needs. Uh, and you'll see here, all I've done is, you know, I have this uh, intro that I always use. I just click and drag that from the files and then I drag all the audio files in. Creates the transcript, not that I need the transcript. And then I pull this in, just the ending, and requires almost no editing, right? I'm just copy pasting things in and then you can publish it straight to whatever you want to publish it to. So, I've already published it and I use something called Buzzsprout for all my podcasting needs. And you'll see it's already uploaded here along with all my other uh, podcasts. And so it's right in here, but it's it's naked at this point. It just has sort of the, the general stuff. So the first thing we want to do is, you know, we got to schedule it out. So it's the 29th today. It's coming out tomorrow. I'm falling behind, guys. Uh, and I usually release at uh, 5 a.m., but you know what? Let's change it up. Let's do 12 p.m. Uh, just for the heck of it. And then uh, you'll see here what's really nice is that it has the transcript right in here as well, which is just generally going to make it easier to find uh, on the platforms. Okay, now let's edit the description. So we got linear regression. We're going to go back uh, to, uh, to Claude here. And you'll see we have our podcast description. Let's read it. This episode impacts linear regression. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Discover use cases, learn strengths and weaknesses. Why not? And obviously, again, you can have more fun with this. You can have prompts that you use specifically for this. That's totally fine. Or, or examples of the tone you want. But just for the sake of this, we'll do it quick. You can edit all this stuff if you want, but uh, we're not going to. We save this episode. And then uh, we'll come back here in a minute, but now it's time to actually upload everything into where it's going to live. So uh, I use HubSpot. It's great, uh, but it's super expensive. So just be aware of that. This might not be the tool for you, but it includes everything you kind of you kind of need in one place. So we're going to create a, a blog, a new blog post, put it on our blog. We're going to start here with sort of just. Uh, an empty page with all these pop-ups. Okay. So we're going to call this linear regression. And then we're going to input the text. So we'll come back to Obsidian. I'll do, you know, control A, control C. We'll plop it in here. And uh, here we have everything. Bing, bada, boom. So uh, the first thing we're going to need to, we need to do a couple of things though, before we actually post this. So the first is that we're going to want to put in uh, the podcast that we just created. So we do this by going to adding a module, whatever you're using, you probably have some version of this. You just want to put in an HTML block of some kind or an iframe block, whatever it's called. And then we come back here to... Uh, Buzzsprout, and again, yours is going to have this too somewhere, uh, but you just want to embed this one episode. Now, I do this because, you know, people coming to the website, uh, they might find the sound better. They might rather listen to it. Who knows, right? So why not just put this at the top? And it's not going to show up right now, but uh, when I save this, uh, you'll, you'll see it's going to be embedded right there at the top. 
Okay, you're going to want to go into settings. So here we have, you know, everything. We're going to uh, assign this to Miss Nura. Now, this is me philosophically, right? Like, if I'm writing something uh, that is mostly created by AI, I feel like I got to give that AI credit, right? Because they did most of the work, you know, they. So that's why we have a couple of these AI avatars. I'll talk about that in some other posts. But I assign all of these types of ones to Miss Nora because it's like she's written it. She's like the voice, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'll set our tags for we'll just do education, machine learning. And then uh, we want to upload our image. So we're upload and you'll remember we created this nice little uh, Dali image earlier so we have our, our image and you might want to change like I like I always get the, the ratio wrong again I'm a little lazy I'm sorry guys uh, uh, when I when I have some help maybe I'll, I'll I'll be able to do better by you um here's the meta description it's a little bit long. It's fine. 14 characters. Um, and then that is that. Okay, now we have kind of everything set up. You'll see it finally loaded in here so you can see what it looks like. I got to change all these to, to actual headings, but let's just go to publish and, and I do publishing options. We want to schedule publish for later. Put this tomorrow at noon. Not tomorrow. Yeah. Noon, 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 noon. Wow, all the way down here. Let me see schedule. Okay, then uh, in here again, I'm going to go to the socials. It's right in here. You'll see I have it up on Facebook, my own LinkedIn, the Synaptic Labs LinkedIn. So we're going to take, uh, go back to Claude here. We're going to take Instagram post. See, it says swipe up to learn more. We're not going to do that because you're not swiping up. And then we'll do LinkedIn. There we go. And then we're going to take that video that we created earlier on Canva. We're going to stick it in here because, you know, visual and social media, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit better for folks. I think <laughs> your blog post, see, this is why you got to read everything. Uh, <laughs> rid of that. Nice, we have a nice little call to action here too. Let's just take the same thing and put it in this one. Load the video. Insert, so we got it in everything. And uh, there you go. We save posts. Okay, there you go. And that's the process from beginning to end. I don't know how long that took me, um, but that's how I get the pump out this content. So I hope that's helpful to you.